Break us into your praise. Break us into what you want to do today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God. Let's all stand and fix and go into the word of the Lord today. And praise God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We thank you today. We praise you today. We worship you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank God. Normally I, I read my text and then I give my title, but today I want to give my title before I read my text. And the subject or the message that I'm going to be preaching is called Broken Vessels. Broken Vessels. Psalms chapter 31 and verse number 11. Scripture setting for this message today. Psalms 31 verse number 11. I was a reproach among mine enemies. Thank God. And that doesn't sound too bad. But especially among my neighbors. Thank God. And a fear to mine acquaintances. And they that did see me without fled from me. I am a forgot I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. Praise God. Let's just pray. I pray that somebody's life will be changed today. God, I love you. I pray that you help us to deliver the word of the Lord. I pray that you give us an anointing and an unction that God will help this message to accomplish the purpose that you gave it to us for and we ask it to be done in Jesus name. Thank God. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. It's clear that this man is without a friend. It's clear that everywhere he looked, all he saw was hopelessness and despair. And ultimately, when he came to the conclusion of the matter, he said, I am like a broken vessel. And so to start this message today, I felt like that I wanted to, to break a vessel. So I brought some vessels here today and because I wanted to break a vessel. Because I feel like that um, sometimes um, it, that's where it all begins. And um, so I have this vessel here that I could break. But really, I don't think this vessel here represents what God really wanted me to try to portray to you today. And I have this vessel here that also um, I could break. And, and another place, you know, the psalmist uh, was talking and he said, my strength is dried up like a pot shear or really like a piece of broken pottery and in my tongue claved unto my jaws and, and I was brought me into the dust uh, of death. And David was convinced that really he was uh, beyond use of God, that he was really just a, a broken, dried piece of clay and headed for the potter's field because normally when a vessel is broken, it ultimately winds up in a potter's field someplace. And there are things that can take place in a moment and can leave scars for the rest of our lives. You know probably what I'm talking about. It is like a ton of bricks falling on a little clay pot and just grinding it up into a thousand pieces. And um, disappointments... Um, uh, betrayals, uh, negative circumstances that we find ourselves in uh, destroy that vessel that we used to be. And we don't feel like that we are worthy of anything anymore because we have become broken. And um, no, uh, we just feel like a piece of broken clay. And if you don't realize the power of the, the, the potter to take broken things and to mend them. And so today I want to give some good news to a broken vessel here today. Thank God. It's not until we are broken that God can really use us. It is only when we allow Him to make us over again and give us a makeover that we really become useful in the kingdom of God. Before 
God can do anything with us, we have to hear His voice. And so many times, the easiest time to hear God's voice is when we are broken and when we're in despair. I was talking to a man the other day that um, is coming, has come back to God, and, and he was telling me, he said, what happened to me? He said, I just woke up one night, and while I was just uh, going to the restroom and things, suddenly God just hit me. Thank God. And from that moment on, I have been re, um, pursuing after God. It is something that got a hold of me. And I don't know what happened at that moment, but I'm telling you, it was at a time when a person is in despair and they had run out of answers for all of their problems. And like they told me, they said, you know, I still don't have any answers to all of these overwhelming problems, but I feel good. Thank God, I feel peace about it. It's amazing how God can help us when we get in these broken places. And so I want to be a, a life-changing, uh, this to be a life-changing moment in somebody's life here today. Paul reminded us that it's really not about the vessel. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, he said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Thank God, just an old piece of clay pot. We really are nothing to behold. We are nothing great and we're nothing um, impressive as far as the world is concerned. But we have a treasure in these earths and vessels. That is the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. In other words, that it's not about what uh, the pot is, but it's what's in the pot that really is matter. God has made use uh, us uh, in a way so that he can use us for his purpose and for his kingdom. And so Paul said, uh, or God said to Paul when uh, he was uh, persecuting the church, when he was doing everything he could to, to destroy the church, the Lord spoke to Ananias and said, you know, he is a chosen vessel. I have chosen him, and he is going to be the apostle to the Gentiles. But who would have ever dreamed that Paul would have been, or Saul of Tarsus would have been the great Paul the apostle that we have so much to be uh, indebted to for all of the writings that he did. And so no saint of God should ever complain about uh, their talents, their abilities, or, or whatever it is. It, whether it be some limitation, whether it be some kind of handicap that we might have, really and truly, God made you for a purpose. And so you have a very specific purpose in God's mind. You were not an accident. You were not a mistake. God made every one of us with purpose in mind. And so I just want to be what you want me to be, God. Praise God. Just that person that you want me to be and so it's important that things about the vessel is that it's clean that it's empty and that it's available for service and that's what God is looking for in every one of us today he's just looking for someone that will clean their heart up thank God that someone that will make themselves uh, available unto him someone that will just get emptied out so that they can get filled up with good things you know there are a lot of vessels that have very valuable things in them there are there are jars that have very expensive wine in them because they have aged it. And it's, uh, people don't buy that because of the bottle that it's in. But they buy it because of the, the wine that is in it. And I know that uh, years ago when I was trying to impress Sister Smith uh, and I was dating her, courting her, you know, I, I went to the perfume store and I said, I want the most expensive perfume that you have here. I had no idea, you know. I mean, you know, making $1.50 an hour or something and things. But anyway, um, they said, well, the most expensive perfume that we have here is called uh, Joy. And for an ounce of that at this time, now this is a long time ago, was uh, $65 for an ounce of the per pure perfume. Thank God. And so I said, well, I wanted to get some of that kind of perfume. I didn't have $65 in my pocket. That was the only problem. I think I had $50. And, um, and she said, well, they make it in a cologne, too. And the cologne is, and so the cologne was affordable. And so that I bought her that perfume. But the amazing thing about Joy Perfume is that, and of course, you know, you can go to perfume counters and they have all these fancy, beautiful jars and everything. And uh, sometimes the prettiest jar is less than some of these uh, less attractive jars because it's really not about the container. And the Joy container is not an overwhelmingly impressive container. But what makes it valuable is the fact that it's made from rose pebbles and it, it takes a lot of roses to, to make that fragrance. And so... Um, the, the value is not in the vessel. The value is in what's in the vessel. And that is why that every one of us needs to get our eyes off of ourselves. And we need to get our eyes on the one that can put something in that vessel that will make it uh, useful, that will make it a blessing, and that will make us a blessing. Thank God. So the focus is on the treasure. 
and not on the vessel. The test of true ministry is not the stars that we have, but really it's the scars that we have. Paul said, I bear in my body the, the marks or the brand of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Paul's ministry started with him being knocked down on the road to Damascus. It started with him being broken. And then God was able to empower him. And that is why that Paul talks often about, uh, you know, not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the power. Or here, he's talking about the excellency of the power of Christ may be seen in us. And so there is something about just getting broken before him. And so I want this, this moment to be a, a life-changing moment in someone's life today that the, the burden of this message is really to help someone that has been broken by the circumstances of life. And you may be uh, coming from feeling like that you have missed your opportunity, you have missed your moment to be used of God. It really doesn't matter to God, uh, really, all he wants to see is brokenness. He doesn't matter what broke us. He just wants to take whatever it is that broke us. And it could be our own doings. It could be what others have done to us. It could be something that happened to you in your childhood. It really doesn't matter to God. All he sees is brokenness. And when he sees brokenness, then that is when he can begin to work. And so God can take a, a brokenness piece and he can begin to take that broken thing and begin to use it in a very special way in his kingdom. And, and, and you're, you're going to be uh, amazed that everything that gets broken doesn't wind up in the potter's field. There are places besides the potter's field that you can go today. And so it is my burden that I can help you to understand what Peter said that the trying of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that is perishable. Though it be um, tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And even broken pieces today, thank God, and all the trials and all the tests. Uh, we don't always overcome every trial. We don't always overcome every test. But the truth of the matter is, is that God is using the, the good and the bad. And God, He uses our victories. He uses our defeats. It doesn't really matter to God how uh, He gets us to where He's trying to get us to. He just wants us to keep going in the right direction. And so today, I want to give you hope because there is hope for even the broken clay that's here today. Psalm 68 and uh, 13 says this. Though ye have lain among the pots. And these pieces of broken pottery are just laying among the pots. They're not very uh, attractive up against all this other. Just old pieces of broken pottery. And so he says, though you have lain, uh, lain among the, the pots. Yet shall ye be as the wing of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. And what it seems as though that happened here is that broken piece of pottery was taken and they began to, to mold it and they began to work with it and they actually bonded it into a, a dove. And in that dove, they overlaid that dove with silver and they got that beautiful dove made with it. But its wings were really out of a piece of broken pottery. And not only was it overlaid with silver, but then on the end of the wings, they feathered, all the feathers were gold plated. And so that broken piece of pottery uply became a piece of this beautiful dove that uh, was made by the one that had taken it, the, the craftsman. And there's a master craftsman today that wants to take your broken piece today and he wants to form you into something that is useful and beautiful in his kingdom. And so there is hope today for every one of us. And that is why that uh, we can uh, count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of our faith is working out something good. And so first came the invitation to uh, the house of God. And you have responded to that invitation. It's like in Jeremiah where the, uh, the Lord told Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house and I'm going to give you a message there. And so today you've got here and God has a message for you. And so what 
does he want to talk to you about today? What are the things that we need to hear so that we can make, so that he can make us into a vessel that he wants us to be? Because really the Lord brought you here today that he could change your life, that he could impact you in some way, that you would leave here understanding that I'm not going to be a broken vessel anymore, that I'm going to be a vessel of use and of honor. So the main thing is to realize that right now it is the best time to experience a radical change in my life. I really don't want to be the same. I want something radical to happen in my life. I want to be made over. I really want to be different today. Praise God. And what you need to do is to break the alabaster box. Every one of us has within us a, a precious thing that has to get broken. Sometimes it's our will. Sometimes it's our ambitions. Sometimes it's our talents that are really uh, given to us, but we're, we don't use them in the right way. And so uh, sometimes it's losing all of our earthly ambitions, all of our earthly dreams. They ain't got to becoming some great movie star or becoming some star football player or becoming some whatever in the world that might be your idol and your image. And it's taken uh, that alabaster box of hope and it's just breaking it and just saying, I don't want anything the world has to offer me anymore. I just want to become broken before the Lord. In Mark chapter 14 in verse number 3 it says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of, of, of spike and nail and very precious, and she break it, she break the box and poured it on his head. Praise God. And Mark goes on to say, and there were some that were, had indignation within themselves saying, why was this waste of ointment made? And they went on because they didn't understand, thank God, what was going on. They went on to say that they said we could have taken the money and we could have given it to the poor. We could have made some good use out of that. And here this precious perfume has just been wasted and just poured out in this moment. And now it, it's all gone and it's, it's lost. The carnal mind cannot understand the power of worship. The carnal mind looks at worship as a waste. But God looks at it as a fragrance that we're sending up to Him. It is that altar of incense when we come into the house of God and we begin to give praise to Him. It is a fragrance that nothing else can equal. It is a fragrance that can be found nowhere else but when praise and adoration is given to God and to God alone. And so worship to the carnal mind seems to be a waste. Worship, when people get to worshiping and praising God, some people are saying, well, I wish they'd hurry up. We need to, you know, we're wasting a bunch of time here. We could get on to the sermon. We could get on to whatever. But I'm telling you, in God's eyes, it's not a waste. In God's eyes, he's saying, I'm glad you're worshiping. He's got keep on doing what you're doing. So don't let anybody ever intimidate you about your worship. He's got, if you're worshiping God, that's all that really matters. Hey, God, I don't, I'm not worshiping to please the people around me. I'm not worshiping to say, well, I wonder if this is okay. I wonder if that's okay. I wonder if people mind if I do this or that. I'm telling you, just do it unto the Lord. And if you're worshiping God, it's going to be all right. Thank God. So God does his greatest work while we are worshiping him. And there is no better way to get God to come near to us in worship. Thank God then when we begin to give him our very best in worship because he dwells in praise. But notice how Jesus reacted when he uh, heard uh, their murmurings and their complainings to them. Jesus said, let her alone and why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. You have the poor with you always. And whenever you want to, you can do something good for them. But me, you have not always. Thank God. You know, when we come to church... This is, this is our time to have Him. He's God. I, I, can, I can do everything else. My mind can do all kinds of other things. But when I get to church, I don't need to be fixing my car. I don't need to be balancing my checkbook. And I sure don't need to be texting. Praise God. Matter of fact, I think you ought to know you ought to have your phones cut off. And um, all of those fancy gadgets that we have. And you've got other places you can use your gadgets. But when you come to church... It needs to be just about Him. We don't have that much time. And so uh, we can do other things other times. But when I come to church, I want to worship Him because that is where He works at His best. Thank God. But there is something about praise that can only be given from a broken alabaster box. There are some depths of praise that you can only get there 
by getting broken. And sometimes it is uh, the cares of life. Sometimes it's the disappointments of life. Sometimes it's our heartaches and our problems. But whatever it is, if we would bring it and we would let it get broken before God, then the fragrances can go up. Some of the deepest worship can only come from that broken place. Job could only give God the ultimate praise. And when you look at the trial of, of Job, the ultimate praises that he gave in there were praises that uh, proved the devil was a liar like he always is because he told the Lord, you know, if you let me touch his flesh, he will curse you. But the Bible says that while Job was sitting in a pile of ashes and he had a piece of broken pottery and that was the only way he could get any comfort from these balls and he was scratching himself with them, those balls and, and his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job said, you know, the Lord gave it to me. The Lord took it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so he blessed the name of the Lord in that place. And then he went on to say uh, another place he said, even if he kills me thank God I'm still going to praise him. There was something about brokenness that brought a praise to God. That when it was all said and done, the Lord was able to say, See, devil, uh, he loved me in spite of his blessings, in spite of all those things. And so God just poured blessings back out on him. And so today, if you're in your valley, if you're in your pit, thank God. And sometimes, you know, we feel like we're in a, in a pit. And you may be just... Um, uh, a praise away from breaking out of that place that you're in because God may be testing you to just see, will He praise me when it's going bad? Will He praise me when He's having a rough time? Because anybody can praise Him when everything's going good. But will He praise me when uh, the hard times come? Psalm 69 and 15 says, Let not the, the water flood overflow me, neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Thank God. And so what are you going to do? David, you're in this terrible pit. You're in this terrible place. And it feels like that life is closing in on you. And, and suddenly, this is what the psalmist does. And go a little later in the verse, he, chapter, he goes on to say in verse number 30, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify Him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord. Thank God. Because if I'll start praising God while I'm down here, feel like that everything's closing in on me and I don't have any hope. He said, if I will... Uh, Praise the Lord with a song. I'm going to praise the Lord uh, with all of my heart. I'm going to magnify Him with thanksgiving. This also will please the Lord better than if I brought an oxen, if I brought a bullock that had uh, horns and, and hoofs. In other words, He said, this will be better than any kind of physical sacrifice I can bring. If I can just bring Him the sacrifice of praise. God is waiting on praise. And I'm telling you, if we will learn how to praise God when we're in our rough places, when we're in our pit of despair, God will lift us up and He will bring us out. God is waiting on praise. And the highest praise comes from that broken alabaster box. It comes from when those dear things that are close to our heart have been touched. And in spite of it, we still say, I'm going to bless His name and I'm going to praise the Lord. And I cannot close this message today without... Uh, under helping someone that maybe is away from God. Maybe you're lost and maybe you're in despair today. And I want you to know that God sees you in your situation. Psalms 34 and 18 um, says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. He's got sometimes sin breaks us and gives us a broken heart. And save us such as be of a contrite spirit. But God saves us. Matter of fact, the Bible says that godly sorrow work with repentance. And repentance is what it takes to get into the place where that we can give praise to Him. The Bible tells the story of a woman that realized that today was her moment to be changed. She had heard that Jesus was going to be in the house. Uh, she knew that she needed help. Her life was in a mess and she was on a dead end street. And so she decided that I don't know what it's going to take, but I'm going to do everything I can to get Jesus' attention. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 7 and verse number 37, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointments, and took it, and took, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping and beginning to wipe his feet with her tears and to dry them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with this ointment. 
And suddenly she broke this alabaster after she had wept and washed Jesus' dusty feet because the Pharisee had not even gave him the courtesy of having a servant to wash his feet. That was customary. But this woman washed his feet. So there must have been a flood of tears of repentance. And those tears represented her repentance and things. But once she had repented, then there was the breaking of the alabaster box. And the breaking of the alabaster box worship praise and adoration to the one that she was submitting and humbling herself before. And the Bible says, and when uh, Jesus... Um, of course, encountered the Pharisees, verse number 39, and they which uh, bid him th saw, and he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he had been a prophet, would have known who and what manner of a woman this was that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And the truth of the matter is, Jesus knew exactly who was touching his feet. He understood exactly what was going on there. He understood there's a good case of repentance going on here. And when she got through repentance, she started offering up some praise. She gave him a gift of praise, the ointment. She broke the alabaster box. And then Jesus turned to the lady after he had rebuked the Pharisee. And you can read the story. And then he said, you know, this woman has done what you didn't do for me. She's washed my feet and she's anointed me. You uh, Normally, you know, they would put a drop of perfume or anoint your head when you came in and, and all of these things. They didn't do any of that for Jesus. Jesus said, but this woman has done this continually for me. And then this is what it was all about. Wherefore, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many. I understand she's a sinful lady, but thank God, uh, are forgiven for she loveth much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Thank God. Sometimes if we're not careful, we fail to be able to appreciate everything God's done for us because maybe he just hadn't done a whole lot. But I'm telling you, if he's done a whole lot for you, you don't have any problem saying, God, you have been good to me. God, I want to give you praise because you forgave me. You forgave me of all of my sins. You forgave me of all of my failures. You're a wonderful God. Thank God. And <clears throat> while we're standing today and at the... Today, that same Jesus, you know, that's what he's all about today. He's here. He's wanting to tell someone, thank God, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thank God. He's wanting to tell someone that's messed up, someone that's failed. And I'm not just talking about uh, today. Maybe something in the past that has held you down and kept you back. Praise God. And you just feel like that I'll never be really useful because of, of this, this in my life. Thank God. But I want you to know there's a God that wants to take you, thank God, and he wants to make you into a, a beautiful vessel of honor. He wants you to make you into a vessel that he can put on his house, in his house. And you're going to go home with the potter and not to the potter's field. And so today, you may have came here thinking you were on your way to the potter's field. But I wanted to stop and interrupt you along your way and let you know that he doesn't want to put you in the potter's field. He wants you to put you on the potter's shelf today. He wants to make you something special. Thank God. And so he wants to forgive. He wants to help. Thank God. He wants to make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> he wants to give you a makeover. Every once in a while, every one of us needs a good Holy Ghost makeover. Matter of fact, the Bible says that we need to get renewed in the Holy Ghost. And some of us need a good renewing of the Holy Ghost. We need a good makeover. Praise God. Because we've allowed cares of life to distract us and we really need to get our vessel in a place again that it can get full of the things that really matter so that when we uh, get jostled by God what comes out of us is, is the blessings of God what comes out of us is praise to God because every once in a while he lets life jostle us around and if we're not careful thank God the good things don't come out of us but I want something good to come out of me when life jostles me